Welcome, friends and foes, survivors and killers. Let's sit around the campfire together and talk about Dead by Daylight. Specifically, a great discussion of power design quality about everyone's favourite killer, the Skull Merchant, and how her newer, reworked version measures up to her prior incarnation. Dead by Daylight is a game with a huge variety of killers. You can play as mid-range owners who fire shot to her pallets, dash killers who run survivors down at max speed, mid-range owners who fire shots over pallets, stealth killers who catch you off guard, mid-range owners who fire shots over pallets, nurse, and even mid-range owners who fire shots over pallets. But throughout the game's history, none have turned so many heads, or at least so many stomachs, as Skull Merchant. She's a killer I have a lot of love for. Her power has far more depth than most players give her credit for, her lore got a lot better with the story she got in Tome 15, and her cosmetics are just... Oh, absolutely sublime. And these exceptional qualities have not gone unnoticed, just look at how strongly people love talking about her. She's unforgettable, and I say that without a shred of irony. But the version of Skull Merchant that exists in the game today is not the only one to ever exist. Back in October 2023, she was reworked completely into effectively a whole new killer, and her old iteration was just memorable as her current one. Oh, if you weren't around for Old Merchant, you'd barely recognise her, let me tell you that for nothing. Instead of her current drones that project rotating scan lines that can't see you if you're standing still, Old Merchant only had four drones, but those drones could see you doing any action at all, and didn't rely on sight lines to do so. This time around, Lock-On was not the discrete stack system that it is today that injures you straightforward when you hit three of them, but a meter that builds up slowly over time the longer you're in a drone's radius, eventually exposing you when the meter is full. This version of the killer was definitely remarkable, a force to be reckoned with in her own right. And many Dead by Daylight players asked the question, was New Skull Merchant really an improvement over the old one? Or is this a case of being unable to teach old killers new tricks? So I think it's time we settle the discussion. How different really is Old Merchant from her new version? And is the rework an improvement or a step back in terms of design quality? Let's first of all look at the killer in chase and how modern drones interact with the mechanics of the chase compared to the original drones. Skull Merchant's old drones, of which she had four, created zones where the drones could see you through walls and even through floors to build up the exposed meter. And at face value, it this mechanic has less points of interaction because, well, Merchant's drones have to actually spot you now. Survivors couldn't play around the beam lines of sight back then because they didn't need to draw line of sight, which in theory would mean that old Merchant has fewer points of interaction than new Merchant. If you think about it really hard though, from the point of view of a drone, the opposite is actually true. See, imagine you're a drone, a mindless instrument programmed with a single function and devoid of any complex thought whatsoever, and you're trying to spot survivors to lock on them. Merchant's new drones are pretty stupid in that regard. They can pick up survivors exactly where they're looking and nowhere else. But Merchant's old drones had a lot more they could do. They could see you in all directions, regardless of where the housing or the drone was facing, and could even see you through walls and floors. And that should make it obvious how much smarter they are than Merchant's new drones. Like if someone can spot you through a wall, they've got to be smarter than someone who has to look at you directly to spot you, right? And if old Merchant's drones are smarter than her new drones, then clearly old Merchant was the smarter killer. Like, it's obvious, really. But we've also got to talk about the whole three gen situation, because that's ostensibly why Merchant got reworked in the first place. She used to be able to hold a 3 gen for an absurdly long time, 50 plus minutes for the most dedicated players. And some have said that keeping players in a match for almost an hour with basically no effort required is somehow a design flaw? Like, that never made sense to me, because everything I hear about DVD players suggests to me that they don't want to play the game anyway. They seem to get mad or disconnect in their matches all the time, so you'd think that a killer that makes matches take forever would be something that they would look forward to. The more time any individual game takes, the fewer matches of DBD they will be playing in a given session because they'll run out of time. So I assume Skull Merchant would be perfect for those sorts of people. You don't like playing Dead by Daylight, and so Old Merchant was the perfect killer because you spent a whole lot of time not playing Dead by Daylight, and loading into matches with those evil foul killers like Huntress and Wesker instead. Ugh, who want those? Skull Merchant was a meta call by behaviour to give players what they really wanted. But the fact that against New Merchant, matches might actually end before the heat death of the universe is a fundamental loss of the class entity and kills that playstyle stone dead. So what if New Merchant does a lot of things that an old iteration could never do? Yeah, I guess she can zap survivors with beams from her drones directly by aiming a beam on deployment on top of the survivor's immediate location. She can hide and rotate drones to rack up stacks on suspecting survivors, or hit them through tiny holes in walls in a fashion more akin to Huntress or Deathslinger than a trap killer. 
but like we have so many killers with um skill expression once you learn them so it was a unique selling point of old merchant that you could play her at her most skill expressive and powerful level while watching a subway surfer stream and jacking off to whatever the top voted post on DBD Gone Wild was this week. Granted, the pre-existence of Legion and later the release of Chucky did prove that the demographic for players who play the game with oven mitts and ski goggles on is still being filled even after Merchant's rework, but neither Chucky nor Legion are richer than God or have thighs that could choke out an ox, so really what's the point? But let's not forget here, just because Old Merchant was known for Turbo 3 Jenny from the start of the match doesn't mean that was all she could do, far from it in fact. You could play with totem builds, placing drones on active hexes to protect them until you realise that you were losing and started throwing drones down at the tightest 3 gen you could find instead. Alternatively, you could play a chase build, the venerated chase merchant, and use the haste and hindered add-ons to run survivors down with a speed difference until you realised you were losing and started throwing drones around at the tightest 3 gen you could find. You could even play a funny terror radius build with iridescent manuscript, and then when you realised you were losing, you could start throwing drones at the tightest 3 gen you could find. Really, a huge diversity of playstyles that made Skull Merchant suitable for everyone, regardless of their preferences or skill level. I know it sounds like I'm dick riding Old Skull Merchant a little bit, but I'm simply stating something that I think we could all agree on. Old Skull Merchant was the best design killer ever made, and I think I can prove it. A normal YouTuber might do this by comparing old match footage of pre rework Skull Merchant to her new counterpart, or talk to players who played during that time, but I have a better idea. That's right, everyone. We're travelling in time. Yes, I am very British and very autistic, so you really should have seen this coming. Okay, so, plan is we're going to head back in time to the year 2023, when Skull Merchant only just come out, and we can use my old PC to play old pre-rework Skull Merchant. But there's more. We're going to bring with us, back to 2023, this laptop. The laptop has the dev build for 2024 Dead by Daylight on it. In effect, it is our time capsule containing new Skull Merchant. So we can play 2023 Skull Merchant and 2024 Skull Merchant and figure out which one is better. We're going to travel back using my custom built time machine, the tool for assessing rework design and interactivity systems. Unfortunately, you can't see it because, you know, budgetary reasons, I'm not made of money. But don't worry, you can trust me, it's here, and I'm going to see you in 2023. Let's go. Ah, March 2023. It really doesn't feel very different from, you know, this year, does it? It looks very similar to me, but no matter, because we are going to hop on that PC and play us an old Skull Merchant. Wait, hang on a minute, I think I'm getting a call on, on this thing. Wait, hang on, let me patch you guys in. Yo, Pixel, how you doing? Hi, huh, yeah, Scooty. Hi, Scooty, pleasure, pleasure to talk to you. Oh, dude, I'm great. Have you seen the new trailer? No, wait, hang on. Oh, the Skull Merchant trailer. Oh, uh, yeah, well, a few weeks ago, but yeah, I've seen the Merchant trailer. Skull Merchant? Do you mean the attraction? Hang on, wait, shit. Hang on, he's called the attraction? Hang on. Wait, are you trying to tell me the new killer is Springtrap? Yeah, dude, Springtrap's finally here. He's on PTV right now. It's awesome. So there's no Skull Merchant, just, just Springtrap. Yeah, it's sick, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't realize Springtrap was coming. I'll be honest, all you had to do was run the URL of the teaser image through a cipher keycard to the number 87 to reveal a series of coordinates that led you directly to a tanning salon in Connecticut where the receptionist will tell you that she worked with someone whose squash partner had an image of Scott Coffin burnt onto their toast at a Denny's one morning. I don't, they're kind of screaming it from the rooftops. No, 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 th th this can't be right. The PDB, dude, it's awesome. Flicktrap's real, man. Flicktrap. Dear God, this is worse than I thought. This, this, this can only mean. Hey, uh, Pixel, are you good there? Wait, Scooty. Sorry, don't worry. Can't stick around though. I have got to go. So, uh, see you later. All right, bye, dude. See you later. Okay, this is a complete disaster. I think in this timeline, Skull Merchant never existed. She never got made, and we got some stupid undead zombie rabbit child murderer thing. What? How utterly unthinkable! Like. Imagine Dead by Daylight without Skull Merchant. The community wouldn't stand for it. I certainly wouldn't stand for it. Right, that's it. We have to fix things. We have to go back in time, go back further, figure out what's gone wrong, fix the timeline, put it right. That's how we get Skull Merchant back. I, I can't live without her. Sorry, um, the community won't be able to 
to in, endure endure without her because she's so well liked and popular. So, new plan. We're going to head back to 2016, the year that Dead by Daylight was originally developed and released. Something's gone wrong somewhere, and the best way we can figure it out by going right back to the beginning. Maybe someone misfiled a note or smudged a napkin with an idea written on it or something, or really, who knows what's happened out there. It, it could be dangerous, it could be problematic for the entire of human history, but for Skull Merchant, I think we can all agree it's worth it. Now once again, to the TARDIS! <sighs> This is very weird, because this is the summer of 2016, when Dead by Daylight was kind of getting the ball rolling, but this is my flat. I only moved in here two years ago. So why, why is it decorated the same way? I'm sure there's some sort of meta reason for it, but regardless, we are in 2016 now. This is our best shot at finding out what on earth behaviour has going on. What went wrong to make Skull Merchant never happen? So, give me a sec, and I'll just hack the servers. It seems to be some weird broadcast coming from Behaviour HQ, like, I can't quite decrypt it, but maybe if I can patch you in, that'll help clear things up, so, uh, give me a sec. Hi, I'm Remy Racine, CEO of Behaviour Interactive, and I'm here to announce a new genre-bending experience that you won't believe we actually got the rights to. Angry Birds, the movie, the game, promises to bring to life all of the magic of your favorite animated movie of 2016. Except trolls, but how are we supposed to compare to that masterpiece? The entire colorful cast of Angry Birds is here and ready to be enjoyed by players across the world. But unfortunately, we couldn't get the movie's voice actors, so the birds will be played by office interns. We're so broke we couldn't even afford Keegan-Michael Key. Anyway, Angry Birds, the movie, the game, will be on sale at stores near you, so get your copies in October. Angry Birds, the movie, the game? Like, who on earth advertising that? This is the Dead by Daylight comes out. Come on, the game doesn't even look good. Although, Keegan Michael Key isn't in it, so, you know, could be worse. But this isn't right. There should be DBD advertising all over the place. This should be when the, the game first launches. Where's the early access hype? Where's the Twitch streamers playing it? I think I need to take a bit of a closer look at whatever's going on in these servers because something's gone very badly wrong. So give me a second. Hang on a minute. I think I'm hearing a... Is that a voice in there? There's somebody trapped in the system. Let me, let me just pull them out for a sec. Let me try and... Bring him out to say hello. Wait, is that? It can't be Linksy, can it? Linksy, is that you? Um, sorry, do I know you? Yeah, I, I make a lot of DBD law videos. Like maybe you, maybe from there. Not as far as I remember. No, I had you on the channel a little while ago to talk about twins together. Don't you remember that? Nope, doesn't ring a bell. I donated my kidney to you. Uh, yeah. You're the guy from the hospital? Smuckles, right? Okay, so what are you doing here in Behaviour's servers? This isn't meant to happen. Don't you live in Norway? It's a long story, but I think I hit a survivor with Victor and went into fatigue for so long that I fell back in time and got stuck in Behaviour's servers. Damn, that is... That's just brutal, that is. Wait. Wait, does that mean... That mean you're behind the Angry Birds thing? Yep, that's me. When I turned up back here, I realised the only way I could make things right and get back to the present day was to stop myself playing Dead by Daylight in the first place. If I can't play that game that got me stuck in the future, I won't get stuck in the past and I'll be free. So, wait a second, you, you don't seriously mean, do you? Yep, I've been sabotaging it from the inside. Deleting code, corrupting software, sending insulting messages to the Halloween license holders from Matthew Cote's email address. I'm making sure Dead by Daylight never exists at all. Linksy, you, you can't be serious. You can't just make a world without Dead by Daylight. This is... this is insane! Like, can you imagine a world without Dead by Daylight? Okay, okay, actually, maybe, maybe she's got a point. Lixie, Lixie, you are a genius. This is a fantastic idea. So you're not going to stop me? I'm messing with the fabric of time and space here. This could have serious implications. 
Mate, are you kidding? You're doing a public service. Keep it up. Like, come on. Um, okay then. Looking forward to never having met you, I guess. And exactly the same to you. <sighs> Dead by daylight, never even going to exist. Imagine how much happier we'll all be. Imagine what I can do with my life instead of making these law videos. Like, I could start a band. I could run for prime minister. I could stream Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> oh god, Texas Chainsaw. Ah. Maybe another timeline, eh? Uh, okay, so we're gonna head back to 2024 now. Uh, but what a great time! Lexi's fixing everything. It's our lives are gonna be so much better. Are you, are you ready for this? Like, I'm so excited. I'm properly gassed. Are you? Like, come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Back in the present day. Let's uh, take a seat and see what the future holds. All right then. Let's see if Linksy got the job done. <laughs> oh shit. Dead by Daylight's still installed. What, what's it doing that for? Like, the game should be gone, right? Oh, cock. I left the laptop containing the 2024 dev build of DBD in the past. I remember I put it back in 2016 and I forgot to, forgot to pick it up again. So I'm guessing someone at Behaviour found the laptop and that's made DVD exist in the present day because they saw the original dev build and then built it. Ah, uh, that's like DVD's still around, but at least Skull Merchant's still here. So maybe it's a lesson then that we should learn to love what we have and not wonder too much about what could be. Enjoy what we have here right now. Honestly, Surprise didn't go a lot worse. Because you know, Linksy and I meddled a lot with fabric space and time. And one thing you know about space and time, it's very, very easy to make mistakes. Imagine if we'd done something in time, something that caused a character that we both really like to change on a massive fundamental and very frightening level. This could be a disaster if it's done poorly, but thank god that hasn't like it's happened, right? Wait. What's that sound? Oh my god, Victor, what did they do to you?